So uh, Luca and I, we were very close during pandemic times, and I think that's really important to highlight. We have never worked so deeply with uh, digital media before, uh, media and art in general. I mean, of course, we consume a lot of music, we consume a lot of digital art, but we were mainly traditional media fine arts, and she is a cello player. So for us, it was very new, this uh, environment of pandemics, and we were trying to transport our art from that fine art, traditional music, uh, to this other place that we could express ourselves, that is the digital art world. We, we needed that during the day time. <laughs> and uh, as um, two friends working very closely, we decided to challenge ourselves to do something with our main media in an other level that would be uh, symmetric with what was happening around us. And uh, so we started doing this experimental art. I would start working with um, motion arts and motion graphics, and she was start working with synthetic music. And we just support each other so much, exploring these other territories, and we decided to combine them. And it was really huge because it happened precisely when I read uh, a syntropy called uh, the art call for uh, digital art and I was like okay so this is the moment that we can take out this uh, experimental thing and really try to condense and to lapidate and to merge into something that it's both mine and hers and um, it worked <laughs> apparently <laughs> and we were so surprised uh, when we got accepted by your call because it was so new for us to do that uh, because I always exhibit as a painter mostly, and she as a cello player. And then all of a sudden we're doing this sound art uh, and sound image dialogue. And that was exactly what we needed, I guess, as artists in the contemporary world uh, where it's happening like a pandemic outside the door and everything we can do is inside the door, inside the studio. And with the digital uh, tools we had in hand, and devices so it was supported in all ways like so our relation as artists and uh for what uh syntropy meant to us you know it meant to us something new and the proposal was new too like conceptually talking like luca is not uh was not so conceptual about everything i was the very boring part about <laughs> <laughs> and she was very creative and expressive person saying like, no, let's do this uh, artistic expression like that. But I'm more in the text and what means art and what means doing that. So we complement very much each other in this point as well. Yeah. yeah, so when we read about your call, um, you were like, yeah, this makes sense. Someone is understanding that we cannot live in this world where art is so apart from life mm -hmm. and we never that before like art stories full of these moments in history where we were trying to separate from life mm -hmm. and doesn't make any sense to me particularly you know yeah. we yeah we are like uh, tools and there's nothing wrong about that yeah. like art is powerful and yeah. i think when we start saying that art is useless or art is something that's just aesthetic or experience we're trying to uh, take out the power that contains in art and what we can do with that for society. Mm -hmm. So it was all together, you know, like this new media, the need and, and the context and the fact that syntropy is art in life, really. And we, we couldn't be happier to find that exactly in that time. Oh, <laughs> so oh, thank you. <laughs> that's, I, I'm, oh, I love hearing that story because that's exactly why what, what how syntropy was was kind of born. I'm so I'm a, a conceptual artist, kind of that they're my roots as well. So I'm and syntropy is an artwork for me. So it's mm -hmm. an artwork that houses other artworks. It's a yeah. I would never wanted to be the type of artist that had my work on gallery walls because oh, you only get a certain type of audience that goes to galleries. And they have a habit of intellectualizing art so much, which is completely valid. So much so that it's it kind of it scares other people away if they feel like they can't really ask the right questions or understand it. And so, hence why there is a separate a separateness in the society how they view fine art. And so, yeah, the Sitchpu is made as a as a way to as a bridge mind the gap to kind of put those two together so it's amazing that artists like yourself and Aluka have really like grasped that concept 
and have created work to share like it's helped you in the lockdown and then by doing that you're that's now helping other people all over the world all over the world people are watching this video because of what yeah. you and Luca had the courage to, to kind of dig deep and keep creating through isolation and it's just it's so beautiful yeah your work so beautiful too like it was really inspirational for us that that's why it calls inspirar that's um, at the same time it is breathing in portuguese like to get the inspiration by something mm. this duality is very important for us because during isolation and pandemic times i think the act of breathing <laughs> it, it was uh, really something beyond because it brings you to the present and that was so hard for us to do mm. to understand the present and i think we will, we will feel that for the years that are coming like how wouldn't the present was so hard for us in 2021 mm. because we needed that sort of escapism which it, i understand because we don't want to feel that horrible world around us and we feel so powerless i guess you know helping but through the act of breathing, you have no other choice not, despite living the present and, and taking your responsibility in the world and what we can do, like artists, what we can do, we can create. Of course, we cannot uh, let us down so badly, like we're not just workers and we're going to work it's traded hours creating marvelously. Like, of course, it won't happen this way. But we certainly, I, I, I know that deeply that Every artist did something during this time mm. that will be extremely relevant mm. or for them or for people around them mm. and um, you need to be in the global scale sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's just your neighbor that was happy to hear when you were playing your guitar or, yeah. or, or the fact that you saw an image and you share with someone and said like, that reminds me of you, for mm. instance. Or you bring in that person to a game where you feel comfy about image and about art and about tiny things happening in your daily routine. Because in isolation, that was all we had, tiny little things, yeah. like tiny little expressions. You know, when uh, your open call was very short, the, the sample we had to send. And I think that was so symbolic, you know, because that was what we got. <laughs> the tiny little expressions. Oh, that is condensing all that it. feeling. So what it takes is a, a little spark and then either the spark, exactly. the spark resonates and the spark is there, or it's not. And that's why I get through <laughs> submissions very, very quickly because the sparks are at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it can it come from the intention of the artist and you can feel that. Yes. So, yeah, I think this part of isolation is sad of course and we lost a lot and i think that's really important to always remind you know, like we are survivors mm -hmm. after all mm -hmm. and uh i think a good way to try to build this bridge you talked is uh, the bridge between those who survived and those who didn't and the bridge between the ones that are in poverty right now and the ones that could make it through mm -hmm. Like, uh, we can collaborate in the social act, in art is social, Absolutely. art is politics. Absolutely. And um, I'm working on a massive uh, project that is precisely trying to feel part of this great, this sort of app for localization art around you, and not only galleries, you know, like uh, graffiti and street art, yeah. and um, ceramics art, and native art, and art that is made by black people, by trans people like myself, like other people that are not just in the museum, because as I said, you create a world that you don't need that high, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course, I need to protect and, and conserve certain things in history, but we took it to another level that's not helping, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. So we, we're trying to take that back uh, slowly and smoothly and not with that uh, violence uh, that is usually in the world. So I think since we made that, we are trying to, to go through this new mm. place with our bridge, respecting the all art of form and, and nation, because I, I really think we need to think through about peace. Mm. I mean, of course, not in a romantic way. I know humanity is not going to be in peace, like in the way we, we believe that everything should be, but 
we can try now to implement that, to not polarize that so much. And I think when you're doing art that keeps us centered, keeping you in the present, you, you try to go to these ideas of the daily routine and you understand that sometimes uh, we are inflammated, you know, we are taking sides we don't actually want to take because we are not living that present mm. because it's hard. Mm. And we need tools to, to learn it again. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm a true believer in that, The especially during the pandemic, that and especially digital art, um, where because so many cultural places got shut down, that it's kind of... <laughs> not to sound so dramatic about it but it was like the rise of the digital arts came up with the how NFT yeah. started to get to become popular totally. and, and being able to collaborate with people from across the world and create n something new that didn't exist before and that's very much solution orientated and I think that's the most one of the most powerful things that artists can bring to society is is to bring not a not the solution of course there's no like one solution but a, a positive a, pos a positive expression of how that artist has understood their world at a particular time and because they're an artist they would have thought about it and really kind of taken that in and then expressed it back out for the world yeah. and it's just it, it's alchemy it's it's what it's what what artists well in my in my belief should be and so, yeah, to, to, again, it's just amazing to hear about you and Luca and, and how you have worked together throughout that time and how Sinch B played a part in the finalization of that piece. Yeah, it would have helped to because <laughs> you know, the final video as well and everything, the information. And that, that your support was, was really nice too because you were very human artist <laughs> and sometimes we forget being humans <laughs> we're trying too much to be like machines but we're not <laughs> and it's uh, nice to have this support from the community the art community yeah absolutely so absolutely. thank you <laughs> oh no you're welcome i didn't actually anticipate uh, that to be part of my role but i'm so i'm so happy i'm so happy to do it uh and again i think that it it really um fleshes out what Cinch is because not only do we work with established but also emerging artists and so again bridging the gap in between the two yes they both can be side by side and how that mm -hmm. how they kind of benefit each other is creating its own digital ecosystem yes the show ecosystem is yeah. the whole concept I guess we are trying to go through because there are so many, so many voids and we as textiles that we are maybe not having that much attention to, and we need to. Mm -hmm. Like this, like trying to, um, there is this part of philosophy, this process of technology, where we are thinking, okay, uh, we had this romantic idea that technology came to help us get free time, and we are not like getting free time. We're mm -hmm. filling up time and not always with quality. And what means quality, quality of time, really? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's so bad to feel, uh, a pleasure or that is capricious sometimes it's not there are a lot of more ethics things around internet and about the digital world and i think we're not that aware about that and uh when art there's something that goes with humanity doing all its history and taking this part too we are trying to give an approach about that because we are trying to understand some values and understand is not like seeing what's good or bad of course not uh, but it's trying to create this panoramic view yeah. and trying to visualize where we are going through. I think art is very much about that too. We are presenting something. We, we are the present yeah. <laughs> and, and we're talking about that some, somehow. Sometimes it's like even an abstracted art, like for instance, the works in the central field sometimes may look abstract, the visuals, mm. but it's not, it's not so simple, you know. Uh, I think that's part of the problem polarization too because we are all like there is abstraction abstraction is so far from real life and figure is part of real life but then we see what figure are we creating what figuratism are we creating what are the algorithms that are around what we think is beautiful so why we cannot just bring that sensations through the abstraction back to beauty too so we have a lot of concepts of 
funny things happening within the internet. And I think that's amazing <laughs> that we have been part of that. It because is. that's society too, yeah. you know. We are living this uh, hyper-realism and hyper-futurism. Mm-hmm. And, and that's so so crazy. Like, it's even weirder than the ages could <laughs> ever imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we are so real. <laughs> Yeah. There's times adapting and everything. Ah, so, Inspirar is most about uh, this adaptation, this realization about the present. Mm. And that's also something we're going to talk in the next uh, artwork with Estera is, is without. Mm. So, what happens in between? Like, mm. That's why we name it both artworks this way. Ah. They have a link there. It's a link that we don't know yet perfectly. <laughs> We're really right. Yeah, you want some mystery because then you can find because it. It's, 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 yeah, we are all like that. <laughs> I think Luke and I, we are very uh, like a puzzle person. <laughs> yeah. We are always creating these spaces. We know we're going to walk there someday, and we're not so worried about conclusion. Yeah. About being perfectly conceptualized about everything because life is not that. Absolutely. Uh, like you said, it's about adaptation. Being able yes. to see to see yeah. things from different angles, being able to shift your perspective and change because of that, and and yeah, adapt and grow, just just like nature. <laughs> exactly, as I said, ecosystems. Yeah. This is an ecosystem as well. Maybe it's not where we are so used to with blood and plants, but it's another kind of life That's of a living thing that we are feeding constantly, yeah. and it's important to do it healthily. Yes, as much as we can. Absolutely. Without taking a week, yeah. there is no goal about that. But it's about not going so deep into places that maybe gonna kill this beautiful living thing that is growing. You know, as I said, the NFT. There are so many things that rise and how do I deal with that? Mm. I had a discussion in class uh, in masterclass about that. There was people. Uh, I mean, the master course I do is interdisciplinary. So we have people from social science and from journalism, and I'm the only artist there. And it's really curious because they uh, brought up this thing about the NFTs. I was saying, like, that's no, no sense. It makes no sense. Like, how can be art? <laughs> and all the things we, we always hear as art, it's like. <laughs> and um, you start realizing that all auctions always were like that. Make no sense, of course, in paper. Like everything we buy, everything we consume, like what is really uh, for that? Like what is the seed about that? You know, we create such a mystery about the things and such a certainty. Like, okay, this book is important. It deserves to be part of the next generation. Mm-hmm. But uh, we did it with art all the time, with paintings and being so, as you said, we had this hierarchy in art mm. where something is bad, something that does not deserve that attention, mm. are very arbitrary choices mm. and very powerful choices that does not represent society Absolutely. in its totality, not even my opinion, 50%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, people were so um, annoyed by NFTs being this metaphysic image that makes no sense, but what does? <laughs> you know, <laughs> really, <laughs> what's the problem with that? It is. <laughs> Just by ecological problems, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, I, for me, NFTs, and well, yeah, it, com- it comes, well, everything really, it comes back to the concept of value, um, which is abstract, which is subjective. There's no, yes. there's no, um, kind of right or wrong to do it so it all and like how society is kind of unfortunately boxed value like that's valuable that isn't valuable based on these certain selections of people who often have money so they can buy it therefore it's got value because money is value all of a sudden like that's not what art should be about but then you kind of go into the politics of it all so it's and yes. I do think that NFTs are sort of kind of ripping that we're ripping up that 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 kind of way of being and yes and now it's it's about <laughs> it's about co- about cooperation and collaboration yes it's about it, exclusivity and 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 money equals value yeah it's like a uh, sort of hyper vanguard if we're thinking mm. because we have subverted certain uh, values in society and we are not being well received as all vanguards we had in history mm. it's not it's not a good thing <laughs> when it's happening <laughs> we just see you in the future and look to the past and say like oh that's what's important 
that's the feeling I have about this digital art that we started in, in the last 20 years. Like what is happening in the last five years? I think we're going to talk a, a lot about that in art history in the future. Mm, I, I agree. I think it's a new type of social practice. Yes. There's a lot of social practice artists have struggled so much. Um, again, in the lockdown with everything being closed down. And there needs to be new forms of um, structure and if that's digital or otherwise that kind of makes it indestructible to be able to be taken over by anything for anyone because it's the artists yes. that have built it it's the artists that keep it living exactly and that's that kind of digital utopia <laughs> yes totally and it's free in a certain level of access you know i think we need to work more about accessibility in art yeah. because digital world of course just gonna affect part of the life of people yeah. but uh, even the digital uh, environment it's free to access this is amazing you know mm -hmm. you can go into an instagram page and see all those uh, private collections, but they're open to, pe to people. It's like walking the street and seeing a tilly and saying, okay, I'm gonna enter, I'm gonna walk and meet new people, mm. and that's it. Mm. Like there's no workers here about not um, so much this powerful game mm. yet. Mm. I mean, of course there is some, but most of it is organic, as you mm. said. You have these tiny spaces and and they are ephemeral and, and it's so beautiful too. It's really enjoy sometimes. Yeah. And, and, and it's okay, you know, yeah. we're accepting that, okay. finally, because we had this a hundred years ago with the data movement and everything is ephemeral and things will die and things won't be conserved. But there was a very, um, as, how can I say that, um, the impact of that was not in favor of society itself, it was more in favor of art itself. And now we're taking that same uh, hunger for uh, questioning materiality and, and structure, but now we're doing with a social view, I believe. Yeah. So that's why maybe that would be a vanguard, really, because we're doing something different here. Yeah, I believe, I believe so. And there are no first name for it, and that's amazing. They are not a person to uh -huh. say anything so like that. Is, there's no one I'm going into here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> How are people going to do with that? Like, hard stories, good luck for you on that one, because you have hundreds of people, millions of people doing it. How are you going to catalog that? It would be crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we're in a new, we're entering a new world, for sure, for sure. Um, and art plays such an important role in that. And artists like yourself and like Luca are a, such an, such so valuable. I can't even put it into words. So and yeah. to make that accessible as well is is like kind of yeah is the true art to be able to give it to people. And that's yeah, why we wanted to make um, the app as as kind mm -hmm. of as low cost as we can as we can afford to be able to pay the artists and keep doing it. Yes. people in hospitals that are that are like again viewing the artworks and it's like it is it is starting to to, to it's working <laughs> like the plant, so awesome. the plant is growing <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can see applying reality with its real effects and that's awesome yeah, it, yeah. we all we also feel very um welcome for you in general because you know in in the brazilian structure being a a transsexual artist is really hard for us. Like I'm a non-binary person and she's a trans woman. Mm -hmm. So uh, we cannot go to every place mm -hmm. uh, with our identities. We cannot express our art the same way. Like we, we both have transitions in the adult life. So we have this part of the art Brazilian community that accepted us before, mm -hmm. but not now, you know. Mm -hmm. Like how we feel this difference and in the digital a level and environment we have a kind of free pass about yeah. that we don't need and to I feel so worried about that it's, it's amazing such an important point, such an important point. Yeah. yeah people see our art firstly yes and that's what matters most for us yeah, of course we're doing it uh yes and, and that's so important i mean of course it's important to remind the space we are occupying of course but we are not doing only for actors, we're doing because of art too, because of society. Mm. And I think sometimes uh, we as a minority, we are seen as this 
a huge organism that's always worrying just about our own issues or trying to get into society, but we are part of society. Mm. We don't need to be all, every time we're talking about these, we talk about other things too. Mm. And in the digital level, we can see that we can talk about these other things too, but we can also be activists. We don't need to, to choose between mm. it. Mm. And that's amazing. I never saw it in the real world material style. <laughs> it makes, it's of course sad and we're working to change that, but I'm happy at the same time that we have this place, you know. Absolutely. And one can feed the other, you know, like the as you, what you're doing here can inform that, like see, and then that's important. And then yeah, so as you said, you, you're saying there is a lot of people in the daily basis mm. with something that was used and there was a theory in the moment, and it was an idea at some point, and you made it become true, which is amazing too. Mm. I think the power we have to take up from here and, and put somewhere. Yeah. That's uh, something the artists and philosophers and scientists have in common and we need to stop putting in boxes <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah absolutely absolutely oh yeah. Fanny it's been so lovely uh chatting with you and, and getting to know you and um look forward to meeting Luca during for your yeah. second, second video um so I encourage everyone to go ahead and check out Inspira uh it's out now for this for the rest of this week and then in, I think in a few months time, we've got your second video coming up. Um, yeah. And yeah, thank thank you. Thank you again. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. I was looking forward to meeting you, the head of everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's nice to put a face <laughs> to, to, the, to the digital communication. Yeah, it is important. We are not robots. <laughs> we are not only our art. It's crazy. We are everything at the same time. We are people, then we are the art, and we are the face that is like just a feature, then we are emotion. We are the metaphysics itself, girl. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're hybrid beings. We <laughs> <Yeah>. are. <laughs> so thank you, Annie, very much. It was thank awesome you, talking to you. I'll speak to you very soon. Bye. Cool. Bye bye.